Okay, thank you for showing up. I hope you all have uh, been enjoying the beautiful food. <laughs> okay, um, in this session, I uh, want to walk you through our approach to a intrusion detect system of the IoT system. So, uh, just as a picture shows, we uh, um, we named it as um, IoT Woodpecker because we want to to inspect the inner hardware bus of the IoT devices. As we probably know, the IoT world has a very severe um, fragmentation problem. Uh, in my opinion, it's basically a very, um, it's a disaster of uh, fragmentation compared with the fragmented Android world. So uh, uh, in this topic, we want to share our efforts, and hopefully this will give you some inspiration to make your own IoT IDS. OK, then outline will be, first, we will walk you through the IoT fragmentation and security challenges, problems, and then uh, some basic principle of the IoT Woodpecker and the prototype of it will be also introduced by me. And after that, we will share our analysts against the commercial of the shelf router. Then uh, we, uh, from that, I will um, transfer my uh, podium to Dr. Xu. To, she will walk you through the efforts against um, with the artificial intelligence power. And after that, some scalable de deployment of IoT Woodpecker efforts will be shared by Dr. Yang Bo. Um, finally, some future works and takeaways will be also introduced. So um, as we probably know, the Internet of Things has a lot of fragmentation problems. Um, in my opinion, there are problems from the standard fragmentation, the uh, hardware standardization, and uh, from the hardware side, we have a lot of the uh, CPU architecture, like the MIPS, like the ARM, and as for the story file system, we have uh, lots of, um, like, JFFS2 and SquashFS and UBI file system. And as for the characteristics, because, you know, we have a lot of IoT gadgets, like the smart plugs and smart um, pl uh, smart bulbs, and also smart things. So the characteristics is also a fragmentation part. As for the operating system, we have uh, Yocto, OpenWRT, the Android things, even the free autos. And the other fragmentation part comes from the manufacturers. So a lot of fragmentation, a lot of work to do. And basically, the disaster of uh, fragmentation. And this is a picture indicating the different alliance, the standardization organizations of um, and the relative IoT um, landscape. So we have the home building, we have manufacturer, vehicular, healthcare, energy, and even we have uh, the wearables and a lot of tele telecommunications standardization group like the W3C. And um, each of the logo means work, hard work. This uh, is, um, we, we accept, uh, we, we extract some code from the open source the HomeKit um, implementation called HomeBridge, we find that there are 25 categories single in the home automation part. You remember the only home automation, we have 25 categories. We even have 125 characteristics, and we have 40 services. This is all, only come from a single aspect of home autom automation. So uh, you can see the bridge, the fan, even the air purifier, the VOC density for the environment, for the, for the air polluting monitor. So a lot of things to do. So this, um, as for another issue is what can we trust? Remember in, back in 1984, um, the C programming languages the, the author of C programming lang uh, um, language, the Ken Thompson, he wrote a backdoor in the C compiler in, in his class to show his students that you cannot trust the compiler. Um, 
and and the each of the code his student wrote when compiled with the compiler is will be inserted with a backdoor. So basically, uh, Ken Thompson wants his students to know that we should know what can we trust and what can not be trusted. And for the year of now, 2018, what device can we trust? Because we have a lot of device. We can trust the computer, or we can trust the hardware, or we can trust the chips. So we have to modify our trust level accordingly. So in my opinion, there are a lot of IoT security challenges, like um, we have limited computing storage and power supply cap capabilities of the device. We cannot install an uh, agent on the... Um, you, you cannot mine cryptocurrency with your Fitbit, right? So basically, uh, we have uh, very limited capabilities of the device. And second, there are various hardware and software architectures which in the, when, led to the severe fragmentation disaster. And we have a lot of num devices, huge number of devices, and they are always online, basically. And there are traffic between the device to the cloud, and the, the, the traffic between them also are encrypted, which means we cannot audit the HTTP or other uh, plain text traffic. So there are a lot of security challenges. The four, the traditional solutions such as the uh, monitor engines and the honeypot, I think they are, the su success cannot be easily adapted to this new IoT world. Um, if you remember, in um, um, not so long ago, the Mirai, the IoT malware, they come up and cause a lot of um, uh, trouble to the IoT world. Basically, the IoT is becoming the botnet of things. So, uh, the two of the solutions, the agent of the and the Honeypot, has been we, we have to do some modifications to help those methods to apply to our new designs, new world. So the previous work of the IoT Honeypot in the year 2015, um, a group of um, Japan, a, a research group from Japan, they um, published a, a work called IoT Port. Basically, it's a very uh, simple HTTP authentication method. Um, during the four months the IoT Port was setting up, they have, um, yeah, I remember they have uh, captured four groups of different IoT malwares. But the good, the, those are good days, the wild west of the IoT malware. And as of the year of 2017, a group of researchers from Palo Alto Networks, they uh, published a, a project called IoT Candy Jar in the Black Hat USA 2017, I remember. Um, basically, what they are wanting to um, to address is the IoT malware is smarter and smarter. You can you cannot put a very very simple honeypot and to capture them. So to summarize those challenges, we have uh, agent part, we have um, fragmentation issues and the constrained environment and the encrypted traffic, and for the hardware honeypot part, we have. Um, the smart mal malware trouble, they have uh, the simulator detection function, they can, they can be honeypot resistant. So, and beside that, honeypot is not an answer for the system security. So, it comes to our mind that since the uh, adversary will be smart enough to detect honeypot, why not we directly use the um, original device in the wild? In our opinion, we uh, think we should do the least modification to the, those devices to be a honeypot. Uh, all of our work will be based on this single one hypothesis, the uh, inevitability of the memory accessing, which means if the attacker has has bypassed a lot of the uh, firewall, the the social networking, and any other um, 
fancy things to get it to your IoT devices. You have the mail, uh, not me, the, the adversaries have to store the payload, the software, the malware in the memory, the non-volatile memories. So if it's not install those malware back backdoors, a simple reboot will solve each of the IoT problem, right? So uh, based on this hypothesis, we um, build up a very simple prototype of the IoT woodpecker. Basically, uh, we monitor the SPI traffic between the flash or flash chip and the uh, CPU. For example, for the wireless routers, we simply put a logic analyzer on the SPI traffic. And we wrote some code um, based on the SDK that the logic analyzer provides. We uh, extract the, the JFF and the other file systems. We extract the file system log. So uh, the basic principle of the um, a story system is not as fragmented as other things in IoT because um, they are basically um, no more than um, maybe at least um, two or three different types of uh, NVM. For example, they are SPI flash and they are NAND flash. The interface is on FI. They are inerable types. There are no fragmentation problems. And at the right, this is the timing uh, diagram of the different, uh, the, the, the two of the NVMs, the interfaces. So, um, like the, there are the SCK, the clock from the master, and the ma master out, slave in, and master in, slave out, and slave select. We only have to monitor those four um, pins on the chips. Is done. So uh, they are, I think this is basically what we call the Achilles heel of the IoT intrusion detection because you have a lot of um, types, devices to adapt. Why not we simply monitor the, the, the pins on the chips? It's simple enough, I think. So this is um, W25Q128B. Uh, it's a Sierra flash. The interface is SPI. And we can see the we only have to monitor the SO and SI pin. And we connect it with a SPI probe, then we are good to go. And for this is another example of uh, the NAND flash. Um, actually, the picture is um, the device here. It's commercial off the shelf. Um, it's a router, wireless router. So the NAND flash is another story. It has a different pins, a lot of pins than the um, simple SPI flash pins. So um, we will talk, talk, uh, give a live demonstration later. And as for the file system in IoT, um, they are also in narrable types of the NVM. Remember this, you, the only thing you have to know is that the file systems is a little different than the uh, PC, the leather computer file system because they have to deal with the very low price of the chips. So they have a lot of fancy technology like the read-only, the compressed file system, because the, now the IoT, the, the flash chip, may only has a capability of four megabytes. It's a very small one. So if you want to store a lot of things, you have to compress them before using. Actually, in uh, some of the IoT devices, they will be decompress their whole um, whole file, whole, whole data on the chip and read it into the uh, memory and then use. If anything should be added in the chip, which is quite unnormal, uh, uncommon, because um, a lot of the IoT devices, they don't have to write anything to the flash, right? So if would they want to write something, there is a over, uh, overlay FS because the, uh, take we, we, we use the Scorch FS. It is read only. We cannot write anything. But if we combine the Scorch FS with JFFS2, we can combine them with uh, uh, as a as a overlay FS. We can have the both both of them the benefits. So this is our first approach. The analyst against a very simple SPI flash 
the router. As you can see, this is um, ah, mm, this is the flagship. There are eight pins. We only have to monitor two of the pins. And uh, after writing some C++ code with the SK30K it provides, we can extract a lot of the traffic, and we can get the uh, we we can even get the um, file system log from this um, um, t t t uh, fr from this software. And um, to speed up, we uh, we tested the malware samples we get from the IoT port because we call, uh, we help the Japan research group, um, the IoT port group. We help them to uh, set up two of the, the the forwarder. So they shared the malware samples with us. So we did a little simple um, test drive, and then we get a lot of the confidence because with such a simple method on malware file signature we get a very reasonable success. So um, then we are not satisfied with this so we uh, want to um, adapt our simple technology to artificial intelligence. From that I will Please welcome. Um, Here is okay. PhD. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, after the data acquisition phase, finally we have got the signal on the hardware bus, and uh, we consider all signals should be connected to the risk control system. Obviously, before we do that, it is not elegant to use human to analyze massive bus signals. Uh, just just like the human body ATM machine. Uh, fortunately, this is 2018. Uh, we have artificial intelligence. So, we try to combine this method with the traditional risk control system as a supplementary decision factor. Uh, we will introduce a deep learning based method that can automatically and uh, intelligently analyze the bus signal collected by the IoT woodpecker. First, let's take a look at the data flow. Uh, what does the data flow look like? Look like? Uh, the data flow consists of bidirectionally uh, byte streams, and it's a natural NVM accessing log. Uh, let's take in SPI as an example. Uh, this is a data flow that accesses uh, 16 megabytes, which is al uh, always used in some routers. Uh, it's a SPI flash. Uh, this data flow is a bidirectionally byte stream representing the information on the must output slave input, MOSI, and the must input slave output, MISO data lines. Uh, of course, we can use the SPI protocol parsers to analyze the meaning of these bytes, byte streams. Uh, but this is a more manual and uh, not intellig intelligent enough method. Uh, our purpose is not to understand the access content of the file system, uh, but to distinguish whether the behavior of the accessing operation is abnormal. Uh, so how we can do that? Uh, we coding them into images. Um, uh, each pixel of the 8-bit grayscale image can be represented by one byte. In terms, uh, one byte can be displayed as one pixel. Uh, the eight, pi the eight, eight figu figures show the normal data flows and the data flows generated by the malware. Uh, we can see it by our eyes uh, that there are significant differences. Uh, in fact, uh, more than that, the difference part in these images are only a small part of all the differences. Uh, there are more differences hiding in the detail. Uh, the pictures are not clear enough to show all the difference. And uh, even we have this large and uh, cool LED screen, our eyes still can't dis distinguish the closed green value. Uh, however, AI don't have this problem because it reads from the raw data. Here may be a question, why images? Uh, because there is already a lot of progress 
in the field of computer vision. <coughs> uh, for example, both uh, in the left side, both Microsoft and Google have claimed that research on image recognition has progressed beyond humans. And this resulting, uh, this, this result are uh, convincing because they use the ImageNet dataset uh, with hundreds of object categories and millions of images. Uh, the computation has been running since 2010. The, la the latest result shows that AI's classification score on ImageNet has exceeded humans. Uh, another example is medical image recognition, uh, which is the right picture. Uh, the two images on the right are examples of using medical imaging to detect an eye disease. Uh, there are subtle differences in the characteristics of the two images. Uh, of course, I can't tell which one is healthy or dis disabled, uh, diseased. Uh, uh, the performance of AI in this area has reached the level of doctors with many years of experience. So we think we can use um, uh, a neural network to do this and uh, learn, from the, learn from the progress in the field of CV uh, to detect malicious data streams. Uh, we, we don't design the uh, model from scratch. Uh, we uh, used it based on Inception V4. It was developed from the original Inception model. Uh, that is uh, Google Net. It's called Inception V1. And uh, after, batching, after adding batch normalization, it's called Inception V2. After adding the factorization idea, it is improved to inception v4. Uh, then it is found that the rest net can speed up the training. Uh, there will be inception v4, which is this picture. Inception v4 is a complex, complex convolutional neural network uh, whose core is the three inception structure in the middle. All consist of convolutional layers. Uh, basically, all the blue ones are the convolutional layers of different sizes, and the yellow ones are averaging pooling layers. Uh, we don't need to pay uh, more attention about this, uh, because uh, we uh, made the following three improvements to Inception V4. Uh, first, this input size has been changed. Uh, the, because the camera photos are color uh, and has three channels, and our data are grayscale images. Uh, only one channel is needed. Uh, secondly, uh, because of the changes in the input, we have also do some corresponding simplification inside uh, the inception model. Uh, one, class, uh, one classification task <coughs> uh, is simpler than the photos taken by the camera, uh, so there is no need to extract too many high-level features. Uh, last, the output function is replaced by a soft function into a sigmoid function, because we don't need to distinguish between images of so many classes. It's only need to distinguish between benign and malware data flaws. It's a two-class class classification problem. Um, then, uh, we just feed the data and do training stuff. Uh, we choose a then op optimizer, which is based on stochastic gradient descent SGD. The loss function is defined by class entropy. Uh, in the loss function, theta is the undetermined parameter, m is the mini batch size, x and y is the training data pair. H theta is the model function defined by the parameter theta. And this is the training progress. Uh, the loss is uh, decreased rapidly and uh, we got a uh, good result. Uh, as a matter of fact, we performed nearly 1,000 tests on about 600 types of malware flaws. And the statistical results are shown in the figure. Uh, we got an average classification accuracy of 
about 82%, and the worst result are still over 71%. Therefore, we can see uh, the detection method is robust and have a wide range of adaptability in detecting uh, various types of malware data flaws. Uh, the future work with AI, uh, same as traditional deep learning, in the future work with AI, we need three more. More data, more powerful algorithms, and more machines. So, we think a more scalable develop, uh, deployment of IoT with Packer is needed. Mm. Towards the scalable develop, uh, deployment of IoT with Packer, Dr. Young will introduce uh, these things. Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and welcome to our session. In the previous slide, we have already introduced a new idea to uh, for uh, detect the intrusion and but uh, an idea which cannot be implemented or deployed easily would not be uh, an idea practical enough. So uh, in the following slides, I'll show our roadmap for the uh, scalable deployment of the IoT Woodpecker. So uh, in our roadmap, there are four steps. First, uh, the prototype that, that uses a logic analyzer to uh, capture the data transfer on the, uh, the signal transfer on the data bus inside the device, which has been shown already in the previous slide. And second, we add some real-time processing capability to the props, which makes the uh, calculation uh, faster and uh, simplify the whole system. And third step, we try to use some fast deployment gadgets, which makes the implementation easier. And the, and the fourth step and the final step, we call it massive baseline observation. I'll explain that later. Okay, uh, on the left side, you've seen that diagram before. That is uh, how did we use a logic analyzer to capture the signals and analyze them. But when we need to make a, a massive, a, a, a more scalable uh, deployment, we need to make multiple pro props on multiple devices and get all the uh, signals together, send them to a center uh, woodpecker system. There could be two problems with this deployment. First, the cost would be very high because the uh, Logic analyzer isn't something cheap. And second, we have to gather all the signals and then process it. That means we cannot process the signal in real time. So if we are able to make the props smarter, uh, what you say, to make it able to do some real time processing, this implementation may be much easier. So, uh, this is what we have done that uh, we made a real-time processing hat for the project. This, pro uh, this hat is uh, basically a, a CPLD daughter board for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, so uh, why CPLD? Because, you know, uh, with the, the, the components like CPLD and FPGA, uh, the basic uh, logic calculation in this chip can be parallelly performed and can be really fast. And uh, uh, also they have quite a lot of digital IOs, which is suitable for this application. And, and why Raspberry Pi? Because it has a mm, an operating system inside and it has the internet. So within such kind of uh, implementation, we can um, probe all the signals, process them, and uh, report the uh, suspicious events via the uh, internet port. And uh, uh, I just forgot to say that uh, the most check or get the file fingerprint, something like that, some calculation like that, are or bit calculations, which is really suitable to be uh, performed in a, in, in, in a logical component like CPLD. 
And this is what we have done yet, and uh, which will be uh, demonstrated uh, later. And uh, you've seen this rotor before uh, in this uh, demonstration. It acts as a weak team, and we uh, in the in this picture we have maybe it, it cannot be seen very clearly. These three jumper wires uh, uh, ground the read-enable signal and the write-enable signal of this NAND flash chip, and we get these signals out, get it to uh, send the signals to the CPLD uh, daughter board, and uh, this is basically what we see. This is a read event, and that is a write event, and we can get uh, several of these kind of events. And each event will be reported to the, the, the Raspberry Pi, and the Raspberry Pi would uh, record this event uh, into the log. <coughs> so if any suspicious event happens, we know something wrong. Something is going wrong. Okay, let's see the live demo. So um, this um, is an um, iPhone, and <laughs> I connected it with um, the... Uh, okay. Well, it is not just a camera, right? <laughs> so it's just your camera. Yeah. <laughs> um, this um, is the device Dr. Yang has designed. This is a, a CPLD head, and below that is a, a, a Raspberry Pi. We connect is with the... Uh, um, commercial off the shelf router, so uh, may maybe we can reboot it. Okay. This um, is our uh, IoT Woodpecker demo, and I plug the router on. You can see the some write event detected, and then we, we can wait uh, for a moment. When the router is totally boot up, I think there will be other write events. Okay, I think if uh, this is booted up, I will um, pretend there is some um, in invader from the the network side. I will connect, pretend I am the intruder, intruder. so I will connect the router with uh, this iPad. Yeah, yeah. you can just... Uh, just to reconnect, wait a moment. Uh, mm. Okay, I think the reboot is okay. Wait a moment. Mm -mm. Okay, it's connected. And after, uh, then I will try to, okay, this is, um, I will try to connect the target, the IoT victim through this if you can see this screen, they are, after I uh, logged it into the, uh, with the SSH, there are some write event detected. I think this is because, just is because the key generation process. Okay. I, if, I, I just wrote a very simple demo, the, to pretend I am write some payload. Okay, you can see this um, will be writing every uh, one minute, every one minute. Let's see, I can one then, second. One, one second. One second, right. One second. So, uh, and there is also a LED blinking on the, on the daughter board, which indicates the, the right event. Uh, can you see that? Yeah. So basically, this is our demo of the IoT Woodpecker, the first stage. Yeah, if we can implement more powerful real-time processing capability into this prop, we can make more complicated calculations. 
Okay, the, the third stage, well, uh, soldering all the jumper wire, wires on the, the chip is not elegant enough and it could be really complicated. So uh, maybe some faster deployment gadgets should be used like this uh, uh, the clips, test clips here. And the fourth stage, the ma massive baseline observation, in order to illustrate that, I, I'd like to invite uh, everyone to watch this movie clip. Uh oh. Sorry. Have you ever been in an institution? Cells. Cells. Do they keep you in a cell? Cells. Cells. When you're not performing your duties, do they keep you in a little box? Cells. Cells. Interlinked. Interlinked. What's it like to hold the hand of someone you love? Interlinked. Interlinked. Do they teach you how to feel finger to finger? Interlinked. Interlinked. Do you long for having your heart interlinked? Interlinked. Interlinked. Do you dream about being interlinked? Interlinked. What's it like to hold your child in your arms? Interlinked. Interlinked. Do you feel that there's a part of you that's missing? Interlinked. Interlinked. Within cells interlinked. Within cells interlinked. Why don't you say that three times? Within cells interlinked. Within cells interlinked. Within cells interlinked. Within cells interlinked. We're done. Okay, this movie clip is from the movie called Blade Runner 2049. And in, in this clip, a cloned agent is answering several questions. Actually, he is being tested for uh, uh, avoiding that the cloned agent to have its self-consciousness. Uh, the basic theory behind this is if something goes wrong or to say he has already generated his own uh, self-consciousness, the reaction or to say the answer to the questions would be different. Same thing, same theory can be applied, sorry, same, same theory could be applied to our devices. We can test the characteristics in the data bus inside the device and record it as the baseline, or to say as a reference, and set this device in a box and get it online if something. So this kind of thing is basically acting as a honeypot. So if any, should anything happen, should there are some malwares or virus or something like that, uh, on the internet, this device should be infected and we should be able to know that because we monitor the data bus inside it, right? So uh, this kind of uh, uh, application can be used uh, by the, the device manufacturer to monitor their own devices, their own products, and it can be used by uh, security aud auditors Okay, here's the future work part. So we're basically monitoring the uh, non-volatile memory interface. We can extend such, such kind of uh, interface to a general electric signals from the test point or from the printed circuit board inside the device. Maybe analog signal, maybe some other digital signals like uh, the I square C, I square S or UART or something like that. And we can also uh, monitor the power signal using the set channel of the, uh, of the power, uh, power line. Uh, we can monitor some calculations, uh, characteristics in the CPU. And a second point is automated optical inspection because uh, uh, in order to implement this kind of uh, monitor, we need to find the test points or to uh, know which pin uh, of, of the chip we need to monitor. Uh, but actually the, the, the chips are enumerable, so uh, maybe some automated way could be used, can be used. And using that kind of a method also uh, avoid the risk in the hardware supply chain. If your vendor, your manufacturer is adding something you don't want to the printed circuit board, you will be able to know that. Okay, uh, the key takeaways in our 
presentation. The first, we proposed a novel intrusion, uh, intrusion detecting system for the IoT devices and the verified and the real devices with data uh, hypothesis and verified verified it that the inevitability of memory accessing uh, in the ha hacking. And uh, the deep learning based uh, artificial intelligence is introduced to detect the anomalies and finally the roadmap of the IoT woodpecker. Okay, one more slide um, based on the idea, based on the idea for monitoring the uh, hardware bus inside the device, we got some interesting findings in smart speakers. And this uh, content will be presented tomorrow in a session called Auditable and Provable Privacy of Smart Speakers, also in, in, in this track. So welcome to join us tomorrow. Well, thank you. That, thank you very much. <laughs> um, are there any questions from the floor? No? All right. Well, if there is any other questions, I guess you guys will be around. Uh, so talk to them if there's any further questions. Thank you so much for your talk.